Hello, I'm Caroline Plowden, a research assistant of the SIMS initiatives. We are a digital humanities project at the University of South Carolina Libraries with funding from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our website, we are reading one of William Gilmore Sims's ghost stories throughout the month of October. Grayling, or Murder Will Out, is a part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam and the Cabin. At this point in the story, James Grayling has just learned that though the Scotsman Sandy McNabb passed a local farm on the only road in the area, Grayling's friend Major Spencer did not. That brings us to part 10 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling or Murder Will Out. Somewhat wondering that the Major should have turned aside from the track, though without attaching to it any importance at that particular moment, James Grayling took up the borrowed axe and hurried back to the encampment, where the toil of cutting an extra supply of lightwood to meet the exigen exigencies of the ensuing night sufficiently exercised his mind as well as his body to prevent him from meditating upon the seeming strangeness of the circumstance. But when he sat down to his supper over the fire that he had kindled, his fancies crowded thickly upon him, and he felt a confused doubt and suspicion that something was to happen, he knew not what. His conjectures and apprehensions were without form, though not altogether void, and he felt a strange sickness and a sickening at the heart which was very unusual with him. He had, in short, that lowness of spirits, that cloudy apprehensiveness of the soul which takes the form of presentment and makes us look out for danger even when the skies are without a cloud and the breeze is laden equally and only with balm and music. His moodiness found no sympathy among his companions. Joel Sparkman was in the best of humors and his mother was so cheery and happy that when the thoughtful boy went off into the woods to watch, he could hear her at every moment breaking out into little catches of a country ditty which the gloomy events of the late war had not yet obliterated from her memory. It's very strange, soliloquized the youth as he wandered along the edges of the dense bay or swamp bottom which we have passingly referred to. It's very strange what troubles me so. I feel almost frightened and yet I know I'm not to be frightened easily and I don't see anything in the woods to frighten me. It's strange the major didn't come along this road. Maybe he took another higher road that leads by a different settlement. I wish I'd asked the man at the house if there's another such road. I reckon there must be, however, for where could the major have gone? The unphilosophical mind of James Grayling did not, in his farther meditations, carry him much beyond the starting point. And with its co continual recurrence and soliloquy, he proceeded to traverse the margin of the bay until he came into its junction with and termination at the high road. The youth turned into this and, involuntarily departing from it a moment after, soon found himself on the opposite side of the bay thicket. He wandered on and on, as he himself described it, without any power to restrain himself. He knew not how far he went, but instead of maintaining his watch for two hours only, he was gone more than four. And at length, a sense of weariness which overpowered him all of a sudden, caused him to seat himself at the foot of a tree and snatch a few moments of rest. He denied that he slept in this time. He insisted to the last moment of his life that sleep never visited his eyelids that night, that he was conscious of fatigue and exhaustion but not drowsiness, and that this fatigue was so numbing as to be painful and effectually kept him from any sleep. While he sat thus beneath the tree with a body weak and nerveless but a mind excited, he knew not how or why, to the most acute degree of expectation and attention, he heard his name called by the well-known voice of his friend, Major Spencer. This has been part 10 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, or Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this ghostly tale. Or, if you would like to read the full text of the story, or any of the many other works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative's website at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, happy Halloween.